Today I'm so excited to bring you this vegan baked beans recipe because I'm going to be making it in three different devices the crock pot, the pressure cooker, and stove top. So let's get started. I'm using this really cute little navy beans that are dry and they don't need to be pre-soaked if you're going to use them in the slow cooker or the pressure cooker. For the stove top, I'm going to go with the canned version of navy beans. I set my crock pot to high and then I added 1.5 tablespoons of olive oil, 1 teaspoon of uh, yellow mustard seeds, one clove of garlic finely diced, and I actually went with the uh, white onions or yellow onions, whichever you prefer. I diced them finely before adding them to the pot. And then I add about half of a bell pepper that was finely diced. Uh, once I add that, I'll just give it a quick stir before I add all the other ingredients. So now I add one teaspoon of salt and I add one tablespoon of uh, smoked paprika, and that's about an eighth teaspoon of uh, whole peppercorns, and one and a half tablespoons of adobe seasoning. Finally, it's one tablespoon of nutritional yeast and the whole bag of uh, navy beans. I'm gonna add about six cups of uh, water to this. Um, you can adjust the spices to your uh, comfort level. I know a lot of people don't like uh, smoked paprika too much, but I'm a huge fan, so I added a whole tablespoon of it. So once I've added all the water to it, I'm going to give it a stir. Um, I happen to love stirring a lot and I think it's probably unnecessary in a lot of times, but I just love it. So I just keep stirring all the time. So I, I tasted it a little bit and it looked like it needed a little more salt. So I added about one more teaspoon of salt. And again, once again, just taste it. Make sure you feel comfortable adding more salt to it. The last thing I add are cherry tomatoes, uh, which actually happens to be my favorite ingredient in this recipe. Um, I took about one cup of uh, cherry tomatoes and I halved them before adding them to the slow cooker. Um, this is all you're gonna put for now, so I'm just gonna give it one last stir, and then I'm gonna close it up and let it cook for maybe about four to five hours. And while it's cooking, I'll go in maybe once or an hour or so and give it a quick stir to make sure that it's not sticking at the bottom and to make sure it cooks evenly. So at the four hour mark, I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of vegan cane sugar and about five drops of uh, liquid smoke. Now the liquid smoke is really important, so do not skimp on it. Um, it adds a nice smoky flavor to it. And once I do that, I'm actually gonna use a hand blender and blend some of the beans because I like a little thick gravy in my uh, baked beans. But if you don't like thick gravies, just skip that part altogether. So the vegan baked beans are ready at this point. Um, you can even serve them as is, but let's uh, take them up a little bit. So what I do is I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, cilantro to it and squeeze in about a quarter of lime juice. Uh, this will help even out some of the paprika's flavors and blend everything together as far as flavor is concerned. And the last thing I add is about a quarter cup of uh, crushed pineapple. The reason I add crushed pineapple is because I love how pineapple and uh, cane sugar work together. It's gonna to give it a caramelized texture, sort of a slow pouring kind of baked beans uh, texture, which is exactly how I like eating my baked beans. So make this recipe today and uh, come back and tell me what you think of this uh, slow cooker version. Now I add two tablespoons of uh, olive oil to the container of uh, the pressure cooker. And this is about six radishes that I diced finely. Um, I also add about one Granny Smith apple that's finely diced too. Next, I add about a half of a green bell pepper that is finely diced and I removed all the seeds. Um, I also add about a quarter cup of uh, red onions that are finely diced. And enter my favorite ingredients right here, which is the chipotles in adobo sauce. Now this thing is spicy, and I do mean spicy, like super spicy. So you wanna adjust this to your taste. Um, I added three of those, and then I add about two teaspoons of salt and one tablespoon of uh, nutritional yeast. Make that two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. 
and I add about six cups of water. Now the problem with the water is because uh, you have different types of pressure cookers, the water amount might be different. So you may wanna adjust based on your pressure cooker. Um, I experimented with the Best Tech and I used six cups of water for it. Um, I also add one bag of uh, the navy beans, which are dry, and I gave it a one quick stir before closing it. And I set it to one hour and chose the bean option. So this is actually gonna take maybe a little more than an hour. And once it's done, just open it up and just inhale all this wonderful aroma that is coming out from the pressure cooker vegan baked beans. I'm gonna give it a quick stir and then I'll give you a close up look of what uh, the beans look like. Uh, they actually look at that. They're so soft and just very well cooked and you can easily squish them. So. We're gonna do the finishing touches on it. I add about a quarter of a lime, and I'll do the same thing that I did with the slow cooker, which is to blend some of those uh, beans and make the gravy a little thicker. I'm also gonna remove some of the bigger pieces of the adobo sauce, because you really don't wanna bite into it, because they're still very spicy in there. So I just find as many as you can and uh, discard them or put them in future soups. Um, either way, it's fine. Uh, they actually do have a little more flavor still, so you know it's, it makes me sad to waste them. I'll find something to put them in. I also added one tablespoon of uh, garlic powder and about three tablespoons of uh, cane sugar to this uh, recipe, but for some reason my camera didn't record it. So just make sure you add those two ingredients and then give it a stir before you serve it. Add one tablespoon of uh, extra virgin olive oil, one teaspoon of shredded ginger, and one clove of garlic that is finely shredded. Um, give it a stir, make sure it browns a little bit before we add about a quarter of uh, julienned yellow onions. Now I didn't do a very good job of uh, julienning this, uh, red, this onions, but just make sure that they're separated and uh, they're very thin. This were a little bit thicker than I would like them to be. Uh, I'm going to actually brown them a little bit and make sure they're softened. And then what I'll do is actually move them to the side. Uh, and I'm going to top it with about a few sprigs of rosemary. And I'll just leave it on the side. Now, if your pan looks like this, it's okay. It's actually the way you want it to look because we are about to deglaze it. Um, I added about uh, two tablespoons of vegan butter to it. And I let it melt before I add vegan cane sugar. Uh, the idea here is we are actually making our own molasses or our own version of molasses. Um, and this is about a quarter cup of grade A maple syrup. Uh, if you can't find grade A, you know, just it's fine. You can use your regular pancake syrup in it and that's okay too. I'm going to let this uh, caramelize. So this is going to take maybe about five minutes or so on um, low heat. Do not put this on medium or high heat because it's going to just burn it and it's going to become like tar. And I don't think anyone wants to eat tar in their baked beans. So just let it do its thing. Just keep stirring, make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. And this will take about maybe five minutes or so until it starts to thicken and looks like caramel to it. So I'm just gonna pull it up and you can take a look. And look at that, doesn't it look just like caramel? Which is exactly the texture you want. When it's reduced to about half of its original size, it's time to add the starch. I add about one tablespoon of uh, tapioca starch or tapioca flour. Um, I found tapioca to be the best uh, ingredient to add to make it uh, thick. I've added cornstarch and it just gives it a little grainy kind of texture. If you can't find uh, tapioca starch, then by all means use cornstarch, but do your very best to find tapioca. You can find uh, tapioca starch in any of your grocery stores, or I'll also put an affiliate link for Amazon at the bottom. So feel free to use that. Uh, just make sure you use tapioca starch instead of uh, cornstarch. Now I'm gonna just uh, mix it up really well and let it thicken for maybe another five minutes before I add my favorite ingredient, which is uh, freshly squeezed orange juice with no pulp in it and this is going to take about maybe another five more minutes of uh, stirring before it becomes uh, consistent enough like molasses and look at that doesn't it just look exactly like molasses and you made it at home which is just the best part
Now I'm going to add the onions that we had set aside and about two cups of fire roasted and diced tomatoes and give it a stir before I add the navy beans. Now the navy beans are from a can so you can use those. Uh, and I also add about 1.5 teaspoons of salt. And this is a uh, smoked paprika. This is again about one tablespoon, maybe a little more. So use it according to your discretion. And this is one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. I'm gonna stir it one more time and you can see what a lazy baked bean texture this is. And this is exactly the way I like it. So you can leave it at that. Um, I will let it simmer for maybe another, maybe 20 minutes or so, but I will keep stirring so it doesn't stick at the bottom. So that's all I had to do to make the stovetop version of it. Now, you can use uh, dry beans, navy beans for this recipe, and in my post I will actually show you how to soak them and then use them in this recipe.